So you have probably watched one of those reality TV shows where the experts come in and they renovate the family house and they change the wardrobe and they change the hairstyles and they even change the menu. Most people think this is what Christianity is like. It's a home improvement project. I used to think that becoming a Christian is becoming the best version of me. I really didn't understand what happens when God comes into my life. I thought that it was this home improvement plan, kind of like a renovation. Well, that's not what it's like at all. Mm. When you become a Christian, you don't become a new version of yourself. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So, how does that work? Well, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 puts it this way. I am crucified with Christ. That means I die. Nevertheless, I live. Uh, what? <laughs> I die, but I live? Well, the verse goes on. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, I, the old I, the sin-loving I must die. The old selfish and self-centered me must be crucified. And once the old I dies, then the true I is born. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. God is saying your old house has to be burned to the ground, bulldozed, and the remains dumped into a landfill and buried. This is definitely not a home renovation. <laughs> The new house where God lives is called a temple for His Holy Spirit. The old dirty shack is reduced to ashes and now I become a sacred temple. So the old you is now gone and Paul says that you must die daily and you are willing to do that because once you have tasted and seen what happens when God comes into your life, you never want to go back to living a life without Him. That is exactly what happened to our guest, who we will be talking to today. His name is Dr. David Sloan, and we will be right back to let him share his amazing story of what happened when God came into his life. So Dr. Sloan, thank you so much for joining us on It Is Written Canada, and uh, you're gonna share your story with us. Mm -hmm. I look forward to that, thank you. So Dr. Sloan, let's go back to the beginning. Where were you born, and what was your upbringing like? Well, I was actually born out west uh, in Saskatchewan. I was mm -hmm. uh, the eldest son of a United Church minister, so I was a preacher's kid. Mm -hmm. I was the eldest of four boys, uh, we lived there just for a few months and moved to Toronto and for many years of my life I've lived in the greater Toronto area. Um, so pastors, they move quite a bit and you had other yes. interests. I believe that you had a great interest in music and that was a part of your growing up. Absolutely. Um, my parents uh, forced me to take piano lessons, mm -hmm. but I'm very glad that they did. You know, I'd rather be out playing sports and so on, but um, thankfully they persevered with me. Mm -hmm. Might have seen something, you know, that uh, might have led them to believe that there was something there musically. Um, but in time, uh, you know, church choirs and school bands and uh, things like that uh, developed a, a real interest. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, I remember seeing the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. Mm -hmm. That kind of caught my imagination. So um, in time, um, I met a, a fellow at the University of Toronto when I was attending there who had a, we had both responded to uh, an audition for a band. And uh, we got together ourselves and thought, well, I think maybe we could actually start our own band. Mm -hmm. So we did. Mm -hmm. And uh, in time, 
Uh, we graduated from the garage or the basement mm -hmm. uh, and uh, found a manager and we were, uh, before we knew it, touring all over, pretty much all of Canada. Wow, that was pretty successful. Yes, it was. And uh, it, w it was an interesting experience. I would say that, you know, from the my Christian experience being grow, you know growing up in a Christian home that um, I had drifted away from my spiritual roots um, to the point where I really didn't think of God anymore it was actually just completely out of my mind um, I was just so wrapped up in what I was doing so Dr. Sloan you mentioned that you got so absorbed in the music industry that you had almost forgotten about God and put him on the back burner. But we know that yeah. God doesn't forget about us. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's very true, Renee. Um, the band was uh, getting rave reviews. We were, the crowds were going crazy. Um, we had the opportunity to audition for a recording contract. Mm -hmm. And so all of these things were happening. And so, uh, you know, uh, as I think back, uh, my mind was just so involved with these things, I didn't even think, think about God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're immersed in what seems to be like great success, right? And something I believe you had an encounter in the midst of this. And that's what really spoke to me when you were sharing that. So you wanna share it? Yes, it, it was just a, a surreal experience. We were touring out west. We were in Edmonton at the time at the Riviera Hotel. I still remember everything very clearly. And um, it was a weeknight, and so there were very few people in the audience. There was just the, mm -hmm. typically the people that would be heavy drinkers. They would come through the week. And so in between our sets, we would just basically not want to go into the audience and talk to anybody because they weren't really, they, they didn't have much to talk about. And so we would make a beeline to our, our rooms and, and come back and do the next set. But on this particular night, there was a, a fellow sitting there and he was just paying rapt attention to us. Uh, wow. He was, and, and so when we finished our set, he, he says, come on over and sit down. I want to talk to you guys. Mm -hmm. So Bob and I, my close friend and the fellow that co-founded The Bound, panned with me, mm -hmm. uh, we sat down with him, introduced himself to us and said, you know, uh, you guys are terrific. And um, I can say that with, uh, you know, some credibility because I used to be in a, in a rock band. I was a drummer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of took to him. He was very, you know, um, complimentary. Mm -hmm. And so um, in a few minutes, we kind of got towards asking him, well, why did you come here tonight mm -hmm. um, on a weeknight? Um, you know, I, you, you don't go to bars. He had told us mm -hmm. he didn't really go to bars yeah. anymore. And he's not a drinker. And he's, he's, he's just conscious. He's yeah. like, yeah, completely yeah. clear. So it was just, you know, I just kind of just felt I needed to, you know, find out a little bit more about why this guy was here. Pretty intriguing. So he said, um, well, God told me to be here tonight. And, you know, Bob and I are just sitting there and we're just saying, oh, Boy, this, this guy is, you know. Yeah. And so uh, I said, y you say that God told you to come here tonight? Mm -hmm. Yes, in fact, he did. I said, well, how, how, can that, how, how can that happen? How did that, you know? So he said, well, I had a clear uh, voice in my mind mm. telling me that I needed to go to the Riviera Tavern tonight. And um, I had, had gotten away from rock music. I had had a spiritual rebirth. I, uh, so I just didn't do those things. I didn't go to bars. I didn't drink. I didn't do the rock music mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I questioned whether this was God speaking to me or whether mm -hmm. it was the devil. So this is what he's saying to you. What he's saying to me mm -hmm. and to Bob. And we were all kind of just a little bit, you know, uncomfortable, uncomfortable yeah. about this discussion. 
And uh, so he said, I put it, I put it out of my mind. Mm. And it, it came back again. And yeah. this time it was even more forceful. Mm -hmm. And so I went to my wife and I said to her, you know, I have this voice is telling me to go to this Riviera Tavern in, in downtown Edmonton. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't know what to think of it. Right. So um, she said, well, if it's persistent and you really feel that you need to do that, well, maybe you should. Maybe it is God telling you to do that. Mm -hmm. So they prayed about it. And he said, and I came here and now I know why I'm here. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and I said, and why is that? Without hesitation, he pointed his finger at Bob and myself and he said, because God wants you. Mm -hmm. Well, at that point, Bob was very uncomfortable and he kind of <laughs> made his he exit. Got up and left. Yeah. But I was riveted and I just could not. Couldn't shake it. Yes, I, I was really torn, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I said, well, what makes you say that? Well, because now I know that God has sent me here on this particular night this particular bar on this particular occasion to come and make my case for Jesus mm. to you. Mm. And so rather shaken, it was time for us to get up and play our next set. Mm -hmm. So we played the next set. He still was there. And, um, through this whole exchange, I was just, should I sit down with him? Should I not? Should I? Mm -hmm. But I was so intrigued with this. How, how, how could this happen that out of nowhere, this guy doesn't know me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've never seen him before in my life. I, I, I just, you know, yeah. so I sat down with him again and we talked, but he'd always come back to this. David, you need to give your heart to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, really? And I said, I, I grew, not, grew up in a uh, Christian home and uh, I've gone to church all my life. We're doing this uh, thing with the, with the band and uh, I don't feel I really need God. I haven't really felt that, you know. Mm -hmm. But he said, but you do need God. You mm -hmm. do need the Lord. I can tell you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we finished out our night. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, I, I still want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, we can go back to my room and we can, we can talk a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we talked and talked and talked. And it wasn't always about this, but he kept coming back to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. David, you need to give your heart to the Lord. But I grew up in a home. I, I, yeah. I, it's, it's already done. He says, no, it's not done. You haven't mm -hmm. given your heart to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So he said, I'll tell you what. I want you to think about this tonight. And I'm going to come back tomorrow. And I want to take you around Edmonton and show you the sights of the city, my favorite uh, parts of the city. And then my wife wants you to come back and we're going to have a nice home cooked meal for you. Now, being in the band and traveling on the road, getting a home cooked meal <laughs> is extremely tempting. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I just, you know, I thought about that. I said, okay, um, all right, um, I'll be here. We arranged the time for him to come back. But what I want to share with you is that that night, that I tried to sleep and I didn't sleep the entire night, it was, there was war mm -hmm. in my soul. Mm -hmm. Because, and as I look back on it, uh, I was being pulled. So Jesus was pulling me this way. Satan was pulling me this way. And, and I was just absolutely, when I woke up, I felt that I had been beaten up a hundred times. Mm -hmm. I, I just was so distressed in my mind. and and. I just knew that there was a battle going on mm -hmm. for my soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Lance came by and his name's Lance, mm -hmm. still remember his name. Mm -hmm. And he came by, picked me up, took me around, as, as I said. Um, one of the last places I want to take you through this 
park area. Mm -hmm. And as I recall, the weather was kind of cloudy and overcast and it was kind of spitting, you know, light yeah. rain. Mm -hmm. And, but we got out and he says, I want to take you through these trails. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what has he got up his sleeve now? <laughs> 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 and so as we started walking, he said, David, it's time. You, you must give your heart to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And re really, it, it, what is it that's holding you back? Yeah. And I said, well, I don't think I'm worthy. Mm -hmm. I've done so much in my life that I don't think Jesus could accept me. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I've got news for you. And he explained to me that Jesus would accept me just as I am, mm -hmm. that it, it, there's no way that I could be good enough mm -hmm to come to Jesus. He wants us to come as we are, yeah. broken, sinful. And so I said, okay. He said, but there's something else that's holding you back. I think I know what it is. I said, what is it, Lance? He says, you think that if you accept Jesus that he is going to take you away from what you're doing, mm -hmm. that he's going to force you out of this band and this experience that you're going through. And I said, well, yes, I." I would say that's pretty much, pretty much a, a, a pretty big question right now. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what my experience was, is that Jesus does not force us to do anything. Mm -hmm. It's our choice. Yeah. But what I will say is that if you accept Jesus into your heart, it will be the best decision that you will have ever made in your entire life. Mm -hmm. And he was so emphatic that, it, you know, because I, well, he said, no, it w you know, he just would not let go. Mm -hmm. And as I look back on it, I, I just see how the Lord loves us so much mm -hmm. that he would not give up on us. Absolutely. Even though we put all kinds of obstacles in his way, right. that doesn't stop him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, so what is the next step? Mm -hmm. He said, well, we're going to have a prayer. And so he said, we stopped here. And in my mind, I was thinking, you know, Lord Jesus, if you want to accept me, and if this is what you want for me, mm -hmm. I would like a sign. Yeah. And I thought that was a little bit audacious at the time, mm -hmm. but um, uh, that's what I was praying in my heart. Sure. I said, Lord, sure. show me if this is really what you want me to do. Yeah because your faith wasn't strong at that no, moment. At so you're looking for a sign. Give yeah, me a sign. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, as I say, it was cloudy, it was overcast. And after I prayed that prayer, the rain stopped, the sun came out. Hmm. And I thought, okay, all right. Okay, Lance, we knelt down and we prayed. And we prayed the sinner's prayer. Mm -hmm. And I invited Jesus first forgiving me for my sins. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said the prayer and had me repeat it after him mm -hmm. and uh, invited mm -hmm. Jesus to truly come into my heart. Mm -hmm. After that prayer was over, the clouds closed in and it started to rain again. I felt certain <laughs> that Jesus was calling me. Wow. So, True to his word, God did not force me out of the music mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. um, but it was an experience that uh, basically pulled the cover or the curtain so that I could really see what I was doing. Yeah. And slowly but surely, I was realizing that I was in the devil's playground mm -hmm. and that the music that we were playing and the people that were you know, in the bar, uh, you know, with the alcohol and the mind numbing effects of that and mm -hmm. drugs and the violence and the, the car accidents and the, you know, uh, pregnancies and all of the, the things that just, it, it just kind of all yeah. opened up to me. I never ever thought of it before. I never even thought about the words I was singing. I never thought mm -hmm. about any of that until this experience mm -hmm. where just God just opened my mind to this. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's just amazing. It's sometimes mm -hmm. like a veil 
is between us and the spiritual world, but when we invite the Lord in, it's like he lifts that veil and we start seeing things mm -hmm. and we start seeing the spiritual world and we start realizing we are not just in what we see physically, but there's something happening behind the scenes and that there are uh, principalities and powers, yes. <laughs> as, as the scripture yes. says, that we are really battling against and we need, mm -hmm. we need divine guidance. We need the Lord to be with us. And that's why Jesus is our savior. Yep. And you prayed that prayer, he came into your life. Now he's opening your eyes and he's not forcing you, but through his Holy Spirit, he's convicting you. And what is so beautiful too is the way that you mentioned God really loves us so much. Mm -hmm. Like he sent Lance yeah. and Lance listened to his voice mm -hmm. and he reaches us through other people yeah. yes. that can work through, you know, with Jesus working through them mm -hmm. and was just miraculous that Lawrence Absolutely. listened. Absolutely. And then yeah. he gave you those signs with mm -hmm. the sunshine coming and the yeah. you know, and the rain. It's just such a such yeah. a beautiful testimony. Absolutely. So, wow. So Lance didn't give up, God didn't give up, mm -hmm. and he continued working in your life. Yes, it was a gradual thing. I stayed with the band for some time mm -hmm. after that. Um, we didn't uh, get the recording contract. It was for over a million dollars in today's money. Mm -hmm. And we were excited about it, but the Lord did not allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, our band personnel changed and our direction changed because of that. And as we became more um, sort of moving towards heavier rock music. That was the direction that we had sort of felt we should do. Mm -hmm. I became, began to feel m more and more uncomfortable about mm -hmm. that. It, it, it is again, you know, mm -hmm. um, when, when you take on Christ, you become a new creature, mm -hmm. as it says in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I left the band I went out on my own for a while. I found that was very lonely. Mm -hmm. um, my uh, old manager uh, found a, a show band that I could join. Mm -hmm. And this was sort of how I was being led to the point where I would leave the music industry and the mm -hmm. music business in, mm -hmm. in that sense mm -hmm. for good. Mm. So God was working graciously in your life. Um, and we have a song, Amazing Grace, and it's a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. You wanna to cut to that song right now, listen to that song and listen to these words, they're so beautiful.
Amazing grace, what beautiful words that saved a wretch like me. And Dr. Sloan, you felt that you were a wretch, that you weren't good enough, but God saved you because you trusted and believed fully in Him. And thank you very much for coming in and sharing your testimony with us, but we have run out of time and you still have the mm -hmm. second part of your testimony and I, I hope you can come back next week. Yes, I look forward to that. So thank you very much and, and uh, Dr. Sloan and also friends, if you have been blessed by this testimony. We want to just offer you this offer. And this is a beautiful book, Steps to Christ. And it has blessed me so much. And so the information is on the screen. And we also want to invite you to follow us on Instagram at it is written Canada underscore between each word. And so let's just close with a word of prayer. Let's just bow our heads. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the persistence with which you come after us as you did um, through Lance with Dr. Sloan, how, how you worked through him and how the Holy Spirit did not give up in convicting Dr. Sloan. And I thank you, Lord, that you do that for each one of us. And I pray, Lord, that if there is anyone listening to my voice right now who, who is in any way resisting, that you will give them strength to overcome and that they will surrender their lives to you. I thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So friends, we thank you so much for joining us on It Is Written Canon. I just want to remind you of the words of Jesus where he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.